Welcome to this week's SV Links video. This week, we're gonna be doing something just a little bit different to begin with. We will get over the lot in a moment and show you what we're doing there. But I wanted to take on a subject that people keep asking us about over and over again, which is why we're so crazy that we want to build a catamaran rather than just go out and buy one. And particularly, they say, you know, at your age, uh, you're trying to build this uh, massive task. So we have our reasons. We have to talk about what it is we want and that'll get to the reasons why we have to build it. So we want a catamaran because... The Admiral wants a catamaran exactly. for the Admiral's comfort. Um, there, when you are sailing a monohull, there's more healing, which means everything's at an angle. Your bed's at an angle, your table's at an angle, all of the items in the galley are at an angle. So it's just, for me, it's a little less comfortable. Yeah, the, even the floor of the, of the boat is at the same angle. So it's just very difficult. And uh, it, it's more wearing on you as well, because you can, you know, 25, 30 degree tilt, where on a catamaran it's not much more than five degrees. Again, sometimes people might want that tilt because they got the feel of sailing and all that. And those are people who really enjoy monohulls and that's great for them. But we really want the, the comfort of a more level platform. So we want a catamaran. So that's, that's the first thing we have to get out there before we get to why we are building them. And also, um, when you're at anchor, a catamaran has less rolling. So again, for me, I'm a little more queasy. So I would prefer less rolling. Right, because at anchor, you've got a pendulum effect as the swells come through and the, the mass is going back and forth like this. And of course, you're tilting the boat, where a catamaran is a wider beam and that's a more stable platform. So that's uh, a couple of the reasons. Now, we did a video on catamaran versus monohull, so we can go into all the reasons of that. And now we have a train coming by. Just a second. <laughs> so anyway, that's why we want uh, a catamaran. But, um, Let's talk about other reasons that, that these, all these reasons will have to do with why we're building it, but stick with me. The next most important thing to us is our budget because we have a specific amount and frankly, it's $550,000 and that's what we saved up, but we're retired and that means we're on a fixed income. We can't get more money. We just get enough money to, to survive after this. So, uh, we have what we have to build our boat, whatever that is, whether we buy it new, whether we buy it used, or, or whether we build it. We get 550000 So we're going to take a look at the three options we have there. A new boat, a used boat, or a do-it-yourself build, or actually have a yard build it for you kit catamaran. Those are sort of our, our options. And the first thing we're going to look at is uh, some of the things we need in our catamaran. For example, we want it to be large between 44 and 50 feet because uh, we have a little bit more need for a larger crew size. It's not just going to be Philip and I, there's also our XO Brian and at times we're going to have six or even eight or more crew on board. Right, because uh, Brian has brothers and I've got a sister and she plans on being on quite a bit. Uh, she has a child and grandchildren and uh, anyway then there's all the people helping build this boat and all of them are promised time on board as well so we need space for a large crew as we sail this thing all the way around the world but it's not just the crew size that make us want a larger catamaran there's good data out there uh, for example from the ark and there's some videos specifically on this on the net you can look up but they talk about how uh, the statistics show that a longer water line is more or at least as important as a performance cat. So if you have a long, say, comfort cat like a lagoon, but it's a 50-foot model, and you're comparing that to the, the uh, 44 performance boats that are going across, a Nutramere or something, um, the, the lagoon can actually be faster in those cases because it has a longer water line, or at least as fast. Of course, if you have two performance cats of the same length, the performance cat is going to be faster. But water length matters. And the second thing is, is that water length also matters as far as just comfort of 
hobby horsing and such like that. The longer the boat is, uh, the better it's going to deal with uh, short duration swells and, and those kinds of things. So uh, we want a longer catamaran. We, we don't want a giant monster because we have to fit through some locks and stuff, but a 50 foot catamaran is about perfect for us because that gives us the right beam uh, and we can still go some of the places we want to go. And also, we want a little bit more modern design, um, which there have been improvements in the design of catamarans over the years. And so an older, larger catamaran, in, you would think in size, actually has less usable size inside. Right. Uh, older designs just didn't know how to use the space in the cast. I was looking at buying a 1998 uh, catamaran. It was 58 feet long and it had less living space than some of the 44 foot modern cats that are coming out right now just because they uh, have really figured out how to make use of the spade. Exactly. So a modern cat at least no more than 10 to 13 years old would be the only ones we consider and of course a newer would be even better than that. All right so that kind of covers our things that we want in a catamaran but the conventional logic out there is that you should go on a smaller boat first and you should get out there as fast as you can. So let's talk about those things. Going with a smaller boat, well we already discussed how our crew and water lengths and all those things that we need, but there's also a fact that we need load carrying capacity. Our crew is coming along, has a certain amount of weight with all this extra crew, all the food for them. And then we want to do sports and we want to go scuba diving and all that heavy scuba diving equipment and the dive compressor on board and other things. And so we have a spreadsheet, which is available for our patrons if, uh, if you, they want to look at it in the crew only section of the website. But it breaks down every single little thing that goes on board from the fuel, water, food, people, clothing, everything, and all the sporting gear, televisions, you name it, everything that's not the boat. And that comes out to 8,000 pounds. And we have to have 8,000 pounds of load carrying capacity to handle all that stuff. So that's what we want. And so whatever boat we're looking for, it can't be small because it has to handle that. And frankly, if we can't do those things, we don't want to go. I know some people, it's just the idea is just get out on the water and go places, but that's not us. We have a dream of doing specific things as we travel around the world. I'm a master scuba diver trainer and Diving is critical to me. So there's just certain things that we want to do on this trip and we're not willing to compromise to do that. So we need the size boat we need and we want a catamaran and so that sort of leaves out the smaller boat. Now, getting out there sooner. Well, the sooner we could get out there, the better. We are getting older yeah. and we would like to leave tomorrow. Don't get me wrong. So why build a boat if we have to spend two to two and a half years minimum uh, to get this boat built? Why do that? Well, let's take a look at that. If we buy a new boat, there's a problem with that. Um, yeah, a new boat has a waiting list of between one and three years. Right. And that's just for ordering the boat. Then there could be an additional amount of time for actually building the boat. Right, so buying a new boat doesn't get you out there instantly. Not to mention which, it's. <laughs> crazily beyond that $550,000 budget we have. You, we're talking about way more than a million, like a million two, a million five, up in that kind of range. Double and triple uh, what we have available. So we just can't buy a new boat and it wouldn't get us out there sooner, likely anyway. Okay, so a used boat. Yep, a used boat would have the benefit of getting us out there pretty fast. Yeah. You, you would get your used boat, you'd retrofit it. You could be out in the water in about six months or so. Right. And so that's a quick route to there. Buy the boat, do a refit, off we go. So that's the good one. So why didn't we do that? Well, we did plan to do that. This is exactly what we were gonna do. Until after COVID hit, all the boat prices jumped up a couple hundred thousand dollars for the models we want and the years range that we want, a newish boat. So at this point, a boat of the size and what we want and the age we want, even 10 or 13 years old is still 500,000 or more, and we still have to do the refit, and that'll cost us another 150 to 200,000. So we get up there at 650 to 750, up in that kind of range, and that's just money we don't have. Outside of our budget. So we can't buy 
a used boat, fix it up for doing a circumnavigation because it's just outside of our price range. And again, we, we could go smaller, but we have our reasons why we don't want to do that. Exactly. So what does that leave us? That leaves us with one option. And that is we build it ourselves. Because if we buy a Shonig kit, which we did, it runs around approximately $200,000. Now, you still have to spend another $350,000 for buying all the stuff that goes on that boat from mass and boom and sails and motors and batteries and everything. So that's $350,000. And if you add those two up, you get $550,000. Amazing. That's exactly how much money we have available. So that's the way we can get a 50-foot performance cruising catamaran of a totally modern design because uh, we designed this with showing this specific model so it's a brand new model this is hole number one as new as it can get on design and that gets us that and at the budget we want so it only leaves the time problem and the time since that's the only way we can get there if we work really hard and we are we can get it done in maybe two years, two and a half at outside. And so that's our goal and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get out there as fast as we can on the boat that we want to do the trip that we desire to do and the sports and things that we want. And within budget, within our budget. So this is the reason why we're building our boat because it's literally the only way that completely achieves our dream. And we want to do it. So let's go ahead and take a look at where we're at on building that very boat. So we're going to head over the lot yep. and show you what we're doing this week. See you there. Okay. It's a new week and we have our porthole over on the port side. And now we're going to start on the starboard hole over here. And our goal is to do this thing far faster than we did that hole. We have a whole bunch of techniques we've learned that we're going to speed things up significantly. And so we'll see how, how well we do this week or even today uh, as far as we go. We were getting one to three strips on of the um, per day before and uh, today I'm hoping to do more like five. So we'll see how it goes. Not only that, but we're not going to dry fit the top and bottom ones because we now know where they go. So we're going to be epoxying them straight on. So we'll cut out that time of dry fitting and then taking them off and then putting back on again. So the first thing we're going to do today, though, is retape these because this tape is pretty bad from the first one. And uh, it worked really well for taking this off. But as it came off, of course, it rips a few of the pieces of the tape. So uh, we're going to retape these so that the next one comes off just as easy as the first one did. Yep. That was mighty early. The Admiral is here. He comes bearing gifts. We'll put her to work too. One of the things that we were gonna need to speed up the process if we're going to do one on the top, one on the other side of the top, one on the bottom, and one on the other side of the bottom, our problem is, is we have to have enough clamps to uh, clamp all four of them at once. So that's how we're going to speed things up. And what that requires is more clamps. So we have a delivery coming in right now, which is... A big box, come in this way, a big box of clamps delivered by the Admiral. Yep. So we're right on time. You can set that over there on the, on the far table. So the first three boards we're going to put on will not require us to use any epoxy. So we're going to put one on the bottom here, one on the top here, and we're just going to screw those two in. And then one over on the bottom on the other side. However, the fourth one that goes up here is going to meet this one. So we'll have to have epoxy along the top. But First three, one, two, and far down three, we'll, uh, we'll just screw them on right now. We do have to put some kerf cuts in some of them at the stern. Up front here, these first four don't need any kerfs. You can see how vertical this is, so it doesn't uh, twist enough to need it, only when it gets up a little higher. 
uh, we're cutting kerfs in here like we did before. Allow the twist at these bendy parts at the back of the stern here. That's in the middle. Close enough. The, uh, we're cutting them approximately in half. It doesn't, it's not critical that it's 100% perfect. The, uh, just enough so we can twist these boards. So we stored all these on the other side while we were moving the hull over. So for this side of them, we have to bring them back over the top. And we've got the two that we just curved over there. But this is the very first one and it doesn't require us to curve it because it's very vertical here at the end. All right, so we're gonna bring our first board over. We've already curved it for the front here and we'll screw it down. This one doesn't require epoxy. We just wanna get it uh, laid down. Part of the problem is, is that, uh, of course, this MDF is used for the other hull and there's a lot of holes in it. So uh, occasionally we're gonna run into one that won't, it hits the same hole and it won't hold anymore. So we have some two inches that are longer for that situation. In the last few minutes, we've just been recentering in these forms and checking heights and, and positions and stuff, uh, leveling and things, because lifting that hull off shook this up a bit. And so uh, as soon as we put this first board on, we could see there were dips and there were bends in it and such. So we've gotten started on the starboard hull in strip planking. We've got the basically the backbone on the top done. We showed you that earlier. And so we've got all these uh, strips back out again, and we've extended some of these strips, as you can see here, out by uh, adding a little uh, biscuit into them there. You can see down there for 23A and B. And the reason that we extended these things is because we want to be able to offset the biscuits that are further down more so that we can have a separation the biscuits that are down the middle, rather than have them so close and create, creating a little bit weaker spot in the hull. So uh, by extending these, it gives us more room to offset. The uh, other thing we're doing right now is we're gonna be taking our circular saw here and kerfing some of these. Some of them we kerf on that end where they're curving in to the edge of the hull. And some of them we kerf on this end like these, because over here, they have to roll in on the sides here. And so we need to, to put a slice in here so that we can rotate these better. So we have some of our strips the wrong way because we want the biscuit we put in to be on the other end because the kerfing needs to be in at the bow of the boat, which means we have to walk them out. <laughs> ones we need to do today, so all good. I have to flip some other a different day. epoxied in back there but we haven't put epoxy into the kerf yet so we're going to do that right now and a little bit on the other side and try to get this twisted in. Well in our quest to leave more squeeze out you can see what we left here. That way we know that when that shrinks in it's going to still be outside and we'll just sand it down flush. So again it looks uh, sloppier but uh, it'll actually cut down the amount of work we have to do.
Now up the center here, you'll notice that there's a big gap. And that's just because of the way these boards roll off there. So where we did on the previous one uh, hole, and we'll do on this one as well, is we're going to cut a custom piece of foam that runs all the way up there. Uh, when it gets further up, it, those, it gets more level and you don't need that anymore. But from about where you can see up there to about here, we have to cut in a custom piece of foam. And it doesn't matter if it sticks up a little bit, it just has to be fit in the lower section because we can sand it to uh, match the curvature there. All right, we're applying our bead of epoxy. Ran a little short, so I'm mixing up a little extra here. All right, we're gonna put it in place and see if we can get it all squeezed out properly. Go down a little further. Stay, you gotta get down further. Much further. Okie dokie. We've got the bead of epoxy on all the way. These are all screwed down. So now it's just a matter of going to the center points between these and clamping if there's any gap, like right here, there's just a little bit. Perfect. That one's nearly perfect, but I'm gonna go ahead and put a clamp anyway. And then it'll be absolutely perfect. All right. So we've got them all blocked in and the squeeze out is good everywhere. So it's going to be good. Now down here, we just had to screw in a block. And that's because this particular board, it wasn't a matter of this one being higher than this one. It was a matter of they were slightly apart. So we needed something stronger to, to close that gap. And so we put a block in there for that one. But the rest of them, it was just a matter of highs and lows. And so we're all good there. All right, we got the next one on top here. As you can see, all clamped in and set to go. And it's uh, just about noon right now. So we're gonna grab lunch. All right, we're back after lunch. And now we're gonna get started on the bottom. So we're gonna screw this one in here, then we'll go to the other side and screw in and over there. And then we'll come back on this side and epoxy another board on top of here. So we'll screw these two on, start on this side. If that one, by the time we finish this, maybe that one will set up enough that we can use the clamps and get another one over there. So we're gonna come down from the top, come up from the bottom on both sides and try to get this done faster. Also, we're epoxying these on. You'll notice we're not dry fitting them this time and then taking them off and then putting back on we're just putting them on as we go. And so that's gonna get us all the way to about here before we have to do any dry fitting in the center. What we're doing here is we're taking the first one and it's really important that we get this one in the right position because all the rest of them are based off of it. And it's pretty easy. We just wanna make sure that the bottom of this one is at the bottom of the form where it goes. So we just feel, make sure that it's perfectly set there. Now we've already set the length, so we know that's in the right place. put ourselves in a screw and that one's right in position so now I'll go up to this one do the same thing got it perfect
we've got both sides on. They're all flush with the bottom here. And looking along the curve, it's a very beautiful curve. So that means we've got all these in line properly and the curve on both sides looks good. So it uh, looks like it's all aligned and we've got our baseboard on. So now we can build upwards from this one as we come downwards from this one until we basically close this off. When, they, when these boards meet here in the middle, then we have to start putting in the very strange ones that we have to dry fit. All right, time to mix epoxy. It's Saturday and our plan is working out so far where we'll put one up here, one down here, go to the other side, which we're about to do right now and start same thing, one up there, one down below. And uh, we'll close this in pretty quick, probably two days. Uh, we'll have it to here and then um, we'll start cutting the custom ones in the middle. That'll take, a, that'll slow up us up a little bit at that point. But these first few, about half of the whole thing is going to go pretty quickly here. So it's working out. And again, as you can see, we're leaving the, the squeeze out and it's working because, let me show you a close up here. When you look down here where before this had pulled in to the crack and we had to refill this later, you can see that it's it, even after this is set up, this one's from a day ago, uh, it hasn't pulled inside. So when we sand this flush, we'll be done. We won't have to re-epoxy that again. So we're happy enough with that. So it's working out. Now where you see up here, uh, we didn't have to put any clamps because this was completely flush already. So these, these were lining up really nicely, so we didn't have to put clamps there. But uh, in some places like this, we have to stick on a, a, a board here because these clamps aren't long enough to reach the second board. And this will these, the, putting, putting this extra board helps us press these uh, boards flat again across here. And so that's nice and flat now. So it's all good. As you can see, we got it started on strip planking the starboard hull. Yeah, and uh, it's going along pretty well. Uh, we already went over in the video, you know, our new technique of top, bottom, both sides and all that. Uh, and it's going well. And um, we did have to get all those new clamps. And even with all those clamps that the Admiral delivered, uh, we still wish we had more, but uh, we're gonna make do with, with these. And we're gonna get this thing done in about, I would say a little over two weeks uh, on that. And then, uh, We've already planned the day for putting our basalt onto the hulls, so we have to hustle. And uh, next week we're gonna get a lot more of the strip planking done. So thank you for watching our video this week. We do appreciate your time and we appreciate all of our patrons uh, who are helping to get this project done because as we mentioned in this video, uh, our budget is limited and uh, we can't go beyond it. So every little dollar helps and there are so many little costs that come up um, I can't begin to tell you uh, it's, it's, it's just amazing how many cups for mixing epoxy that, that we go through and how many paper towels how many stir sticks it, it's just gloves I don't know we, we've used uh, 2,000 gloves so far and I have to order more so uh, every little bit helps and we do greatly appreciate you and uh, so that's going to wrap it for this week. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and click on the bow icon to be notified of our next video. And we will see you next week for more strip planking. Uh, and also, uh, we got a big delivery that we'll talk about. And had a little trouble with that, but uh, <laughs> in the end, all was well. So we'll talk about that next week. See you then. Bye.